Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. I'm your host, Sybil Muti. And don't you just love how I brought in our studio audience today? <laughs> Those are my friends and family, y'all. They're here to clap it up and celebrate this great girlfriend magic that is happening here on the show. So without further ado, grab something great to drink, grab your pen and paper, and get ready for this week's episode. Enjoy. Hey, great girlfriends. I am so excited today to have on my favorite therapist. I can safely say that because um, I have been a follower and a keeper upper. I like that word, a keeper upper of all things <laughs> that you have to say on social, Nedra. And I'm so excited to introduce you to the Great Girlfriend community and talk about your newest book. So I want to welcome Nedra Tawab to the show. Thank you for having me. Hey now, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. Today is a great day. Good. That's so good. You have done a work. You've done a thing with this book you've got out here. (laughs) Wow. You've done a thing. I'm going to tell you, you've done a thing. First of all, you always do a thing because, you know, for those of us who were introduced to you on Instagram, you know, we were able to do a lot of self-soothing following your post listening to your messages, watching your YouTube videos, really kind of diving deep into some of the questions and some of the tips that you've offered us on a daily basis. And I want to thank you for being a go-to and a a source for um, that type of relief and comfort and peace, especially during those very angst times of 2020. Yes. You were always there. So we want to to honor your loyalty (laughs) and thank you for your faithfulness. You're welcome. Yes. And as a licensed therapist, making your expertise available uh, to the world so generously and also knowing that you have a family and you have a ton of things going on. um, Thank you for that devotion, because I know that does not come easy. Yes, yes. I I say that that is my um, philanthropy. That is my volunteer time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I love being able to to help in that capacity. So thank you for being there. Oh, it's our listen, it's our ultimate Instagram pleasure. It is our pleasure. <laughs> mm-hmm. So for those of you who don't know Nedra Tawab, she is a licensed therapist and sought after relationship expert. And Nedra has practiced relationship therapy for 14 years and is the founder and owner of group therapy practice Kaleidoscope Counseling. She has been recently featured in the New York Times, The Guardian, Psychology Today, Self, and Vice, and has appeared on numerous podcasts, including Don't Keep Your Day Job, Do the Thing, and Therapy for Black Girls. Tawab runs a popular Instagram account where she shares practices, tools, and reflections for mental health and hosts weekly Q&As about boundaries and relationships. She lives in Charlotte, North Carolina with her family. And I am so happy to be holding in my hand her latest book, Set Boundaries, Find Peace, A Guide to Reclaiming Yourself. Um, The manual, I should say. Mm. (laughs) The boundaries manual and the boundaries guide. Boy, Nedra, I tell you, I could have that boundaries conversation all day. And this book has been a great foundational piece for helping us understand how to speak up and, and represent our needs verbally and then mm. set, be able to set intention around kind of protecting ourselves from being overwhelmed and exhausted without, you know, without the lack of boundaries. So I want to know the background for the book, the rising of this book. Um, where did it come from for you? You know, I think that my career shaped the work. And I think that so much of what I've done has been in this lane. It's been about helping people learn to advocate for themselves, to speak up for themselves, to Mm -hmm. um, shape and shift their relationships. So it was a very organic process to write the book. um, And it you know, I, I hear about how people write books and, you know, it was a it was an amazing process because I felt like I was empty in my brain of so much that I've said over the years. I think even my clients are like, I'm, I'm not sure that I need to read the book because mm. you know, you, you've said this stuff, mm. but it, it does help to read the stuff. That's right. That's um, right. And the but yeah, I, I 
and to reinforce it, I think the work has come from being a therapist and being a human being and being an observer of people. You learn um, your needs, everyone else's needs and, you know, how to get our needs met. And a lot of that is us being more assertive, us speaking our boundaries, us walking in the spirit of I am worthy of having a healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm. That That is so true. And it's so layered, you know, um, that worthiness, you know, and worthiness one, healthy relationship to um, verbalizing and understanding and being able to advocate for ourselves. Three is so much that comes into that. And I think, you know, as I read the book, I thought about, you know, you laid out definition of boundaries and you say that boundaries are expectations and needs that help you feel safe and comfortable in your relationships. I thought about, you know, the adaptation of family and how much we pull from our family relationships and how much um, or how little or how high our expectations are as a result of how we've been groomed, how we've grown up, you know, and so much of that shows up in the way that we adult. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think I even found myself, you know, in my adult years evolving with my boundaries and even with my children and my husband having to define and redefine boundaries. But do you think it's a one-time setting or do you think it's a, do you think it's something that we've, we adapt as, as uh, you know, people who have inherited family values and traits or where do you think the power to do that comes from? Mm. It's continuous. It's a life practice. I think sometimes um, we think if we do things one time, we're done with it, but we never finish cleaning the kitchen. We never finish <laughs> doing the laundry. We never finish paying the water bill. Uh-oh, here um, comes the sermon. I can feel it. <laughs> and we never finish setting boundaries. You know, I think oh. it's one of those things, it evolves. I think about my life of laundry right now. It's, you know, it's me, my husband, and kids. They will move out. It will be two people. I remember when it used to be laundry by myself, but there has always been laundry, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's mm-hmm. one of those things that as we shift, as life shifts, our boundaries will shift. So many things about us will shift. And I think we, we believe like, if I do this thing one time, that's it. And it's like, no, we need to keep doing it because it is a practice. And we get really upset when people don't hear our boundaries or understand them the first time, but it is our practice. It's not yeah. their practice. It's yeah. our practice. It's, it's, it's like, you know, if, if your practice is to shower daily, you shower every day. That's <laughs> you, right. know, you know, no one right. should tap you and say, Hey, you go, go do it. And it's the same <laughs> way with boundaries. I uh-huh. think that people sometimes forget because it's not their boundary. People sometimes, you know, um, step over the line a little bit because they forget about the line. Mm-hmm. And we have to remind them. We have to um, be aware that people, sometimes they're not being mean and sometimes they are. It depends on how they're disrespecting our boundaries. It yeah. depends on what it looks like when um, they're routinely doing things because sometimes it's forgetfulness. Sometimes it's just some adjusting to this new thing that you want. And sometimes it is absolutely, they do not respect your boundaries and they won't respect your boundaries. Mm. Oh my goodness. It's so true. It is so true. You know, I have to say, I, I, I'm guilty of wanting to say it once and telling everybody to spread the email. Like, can you text, mm-hmm. can you text that boundary over to, oh, they didn't get it. And then, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, as I read along, I found myself in, on page 43 of the book, things that we do to avoid setting boundaries. I find myself withdrawing, right? Cause I'm like, oh, I don't have the time and patience or, or what I have, have found myself saying is bandwidth to educate people on this. And so I've decided, let me just withdraw. And then a part, my emotionally intelligent self will say, hold on, that is not, you're not activating your power here by withdrawing. You've got to do better. And the more, your more empowered self is going to give you the power to choose and, and to represent and verbalize. But Nedra, so many people are afraid to speak up. Mm. You know, speaking up can mean you lose people and you lose connection you know, and I think that's one of those things that have you found in your practice that that's one of the things that keeps people from wanting to create a boundary? Absolutely. It's scary. 
It's scary. Yeah. It's like first day of school scary. Right. You know, it is it's like, what's going to happen? Who's going to talk to me? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, it is, it is overwhelming when we really think about the what ifs of it. But mm-hmm. here's the thing I have seen in most cases, people really don't care. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we make a real big deal out of asking someone to come 10 minutes early yeah. or, you know, hey, can you put your phone? Most of the time, people don't care. Every once in a while, somebody will go off on you now. Like, uh-huh. you can't tell me, you know. But for the most part, most of the folks will say, OK, that's fine. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and when they do not, you know, how do we depersonalize those situations when, when people are upset at us for our boundaries. I yeah. mean, I've had people act a whole fool. And then I say, well, you know, here, here's the consequence. And they don't like it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They don't like the consequences. So that, you know, that does disturb relationships sometimes. And, and, and that is unfortunate. And it is, you know, it is scary, especially if you're in a situation with someone who is abusive and you're mm-hmm. asking them not to or they're being pushy, or they are, you know, habitually violating your boundaries. Yeah, it's it's really tough. Mm-hmm. But I think ultimately you make yourself really proud when you do the really hard thing that you've been avoiding, even if mm-hmm. there will be some consequence for you. Mm-hmm. You just tapped on about five things that I'm like, wait, mm-hmm. slow down. Uh-uh, I need to... <laughs> I need to go back. Okay. A couple things. I want to get into this one. You said the abuse part, and that's a big deal because what I've learned, you know, from friends, et cetera, even in my own life is that we tolerate so many things from our families and we don't even Mm. understand that some of the stuff that we deal with or have taken on is unacceptable. A lot of us don't know. And, And then we start to carry that kind of stuff into our other relationships. So activating choice is a really big deal, but how do you know... Nedra, when you when you're being abused, if you don't know what that looks like. Well, we know what abuse feels like and it doesn't okay. feel very good. We don't mm-hmm. have to have a whole checklist of if someone spit in your face, if they pulled your hair. We know it doesn't feel good when someone is saying a certain thing to us mm-hmm. or when they're blaming us, when they're physically being harmful. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And we have to react to those feelings and. Mm-hmm. I think healthy people are receptive to the feedback of, you know, when you yell at me, um, that doesn't feel so great. Can you speak to me in a calm voice, even if we're having a disagreement? If you can't speak in a calm voice, can you walk away and come back when you're feeling a little better? Yeah, so good. And I, and I think when you have people who... And I, this is adult to adults. I, I I think that sounds like a parent-child dynamic, but I've seen adults, you know, siblings and, mm-hmm. you know, cousins and mm-hmm. sometimes parent and children where it's like there there's no respect here. And yep. someone has to make the choice to be respected. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I, so I think in, in those situations, it is it is tough. It is tough setting those sorts of boundaries with family, with friends, because some of us have some friends who, you know, talk a, a little too extra to us or, mm-hmm. you know, um, partners and all of these sorts of things. And so sometimes we don't know the exact signs of gaslighting. We don't know the exact signs of verbal abuse or physical mm-hmm. abuse or financial mm-hmm. abuse. But we do know that something doesn't feel good. That is so true. So true. And and that's enough sometimes. And I, I hope someone picks that up. That is enough. To, know, to not feel good is enough to know to start with. It doesn't, you know, without having a checklist, knowing that you don't feel good on the inside, that you don't feel loved or respected in a communication style, that those that's a gateway. I love that. I think sometimes we want to justify it. And also... Um, you know, so many people, Nedra, you know, have not, have never truly felt or known how to feel loved or how to feel connected to themselves without validation from other people. And, and then, you know, when that outside validation doesn't come through, there's all that rejection that comes along with that. So what you just said is so powerful. So, so powerful. Um, this is a major, major one for moms 
which is time boundaries um, and, 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 and family boundaries. And I, I love that when I read about what you said about uh, time boundaries, because um, I feel like, you know, as parents, so many times as moms, particularly, you know, we want to be available all the time and be the centerpiece to our kids. And then we find that our kids have zero respect or regard for our personal care, our private space. You know, what have you taught and learned? And this book kind of lays out some things. I don't want to give it all away because I want people to go out and get it immediately. (laughs) Well, sometimes people will, you know, I'm the type of person you could tell me the whole movie and I'll still watch it. Oh, that's facts. That's me. Yeah, yeah. You could tell me the ending (laughs) of the book. I I want to see it for myself. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, I got to read about him getting shot. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to read the whole scene, but yeah, you could tell me. <laughs> that is so true. So true. Okay, so good. Well, then let's go into this. So the time boundaries, you said you, this is the area where people tend to struggle with the most. Time boundaries consist of how you manage your time, how you allow others to use your time, how you deal with favor requests, and how you structure your free time. People with these issues struggle with work-life balance, self-care, and prioritizing their needs. I could see about 20,000 women listening to this podcast, raising their hand, going, me, 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 me. Like, this is me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, is, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is me. And then you have these examples of how we violate time boundaries and how they are violated. Calling multiple times in a row for non-emergencies. Siblings do that. That's my sister.org. Expecting someone to drop everything in order to provide help. Okay, children.org. Calling or sending text messages late when the recipient is sleeping. I'm guilty, Nedra. I, I don't even know the time boundary on not texting my friends. And I I, I, I saw myself, you know, in church, when you see yourself, you have to drop low. I mm-hmm. drop low in the pew on that one. I'm number three. That's the, I'm guilty as charged. Um, asking others to do things for free. Yeah, that's another good one. Overcommitting. Having long conversations with emotionally draining people. Oh, Jesus. Requesting favors at a time when it's clear the other person isn't available. Asking someone to stay late at work for no additional pay. Accepting favor requests from people who won't reciprocate. I nearly fell out, okay, on <laughs> on page 75. I nearly fell mm. out. I did because I recognize that, um, you know, I, in this community, I hear and see and communicate with women who do a lot for other people and find themselves unable to show up for themselves. And I also find that, you know, as a mom, organizing and, and developing that no muscle, that was something that came hard for me. I got it real good now because my kids are nine and 12 and I, I got it like I got a solid no muscle. But I didn't have that at first. And a lot of new moms I know still kind of deal with like, how do I say no? Or how do I create space for me? So that's a really powerful boundary that I think a lot of us could stand to work through. Yeah, well, no is yes. I think those things are mm-hmm. essentially the same word when you think about your time. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's no to you and yes to me. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um. No, I cannot um, come babysit your kids while I also have my kids and I got to take them to two recitals and you over. <laughs> like, right. No to that because <laughs> yes to my sanity. Right. Yes. Um, and I think sometimes we think about it as no is the meanest thing we could say to people. But if we are truly healthy, hopefully we have other resources. I don't want to be anybody's only resource. Now, now I want to be your friend. I don't want to be your only friend. I don't want to be your only person. Uh, because if, if that is the case, then we need to encourage people to get, to build community. Yeah. I believe in collective care. So if somebody in the family is sick, who's getting Monday? Who's getting Tuesday? Who's Come getting on. Wednesday? I don't know if I want all seven days now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I take you on a Sunday. <laughs> right. Yeah. Coll- <laughs> collective care, not yes. overwhelm of one person. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Collective care. Listen, I have a friend who um, had her baby and the baby was crying and she's about to get up and she'll tell the story. And I tell her all the time. I told her to sit down. Her husband was upstairs. I said, he got this. If you ever want to have a day to yourself, a, a moment to comb your hair, you better let those two get themselves together as one. Now the baby Mm -hmm. cried five more minutes and she wanted the baby to cry. However, however, 
daddy and baby now have the bond that they need and she's able to go and do and be and feel Mm -hmm. because of that collective. It it takes a village. And I think that village mindset is a gift. It's something we can give ourselves, not wanting to be the hero all the time, let other people play their part. Right. Yeah. I, I love when, when my friends have babies, I love to set up a little food drive where, you know, multiple families pick a day and just take them some. Yes. Just take them some food. I don't want to be the only one cooking for them. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to support you. Yes. And you you need a few weeks of support. And I That's can't right. support you every day for a few weeks. But you have a community of people. Now, I could organize the community. I could, you know, register some names and sign them up. But yes. <laughs> I think ultimately, you know, there is community. And we really have to encourage people to tap into community and not just be individualistic in in how we operate because that's, that's, you know, that's a lot on one person. And I've seen it, especially in families where one person is taking care of the person and one person is, is helping pay for this. And one person is, that person is so burnt out, resentful and overwhelmed that Mm -hmm. it is, you know, it is damaging to their relationships that's in right. the family. So it's it's so important that we think about how to help each other in a spread around sort of way, not just, you know, me, but us, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. us. What can mm-hmm. we do? I, lo- I love us. Us feels mm-hmm. good. <laughs> us mm-hmm. feels real good to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that. Okay. So this last piece is so important. And I think through this because our theme for the year for Great Girlfriends is showing up for yourself. And, you know, we showed up for everybody last year, the teacher, the chef, the this, the that. We did home makeovers. We did, I mean, we did everything under the sun to keep ourselves, you know, at peace or whatever we felt we needed to do. And now this year, you know, we're inviting women to really show up for themselves. And I was reading through the book and you talk about keeping your word to yourself Mm -hmm. and, Setting limits with yourself is a conscious act that will make your life easier. Rules seem restrictive, but when you create them, you can include nuances. Therefore, Mm -hmm. having boundaries with yourself is not a restriction. Instead, they help you achieve your goal, build healthy relationships, and live according to your values. When you don't keep your word to yourself, you are engaging in self-sabotage, self-betrayal, and people or people-pleasing. That right there, um, that's a whole, like, I feel like my grandmother's holding me in her lap rocking and, and, and telling me, baby girl, you have to learn to keep your word to yourself. How powerful. Because when, you, when I read that, Nedra, I thought through all the times that I didn't trust myself because I didn't keep my words to myself in my past. And when you keep your word to yourself, you build more, more relationship and trust with yourself you can do more. I, I, I hear you saying you achieve your goals. You're able to, you know, be more fulfilled and more passionate about life, all those things. So I, I wanted to tell you then highlight and celebrate that piece because um, that's one of those things that we hear a lot about women saying that they, they can't get the steam to keep going because they don't have the confidence or they have messed up in the past or, you know, they, they can't get past procrastinating, all those little pieces. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, I think people pleasing is a very scary thing and it's mm-hmm. a very um, impactful thing. And so many of us have observed people pleasing and we've been taught to be people pleasers. And un- unlearning that is such a useful skill and it's also a very scary one because I've seen children as young as two years old think about what they were going to say because of how the other person would respond. Mm. So it's it's almost as if it is ingrained Mm -hmm. in us to Mm -hmm. um, people please. So to some extent, it's healthy. You do want to be concerned about what others will think, what they'll say, how this is impactful to other, other people for sure. But there are some instances where you are getting the short end of the stick because you are in constant, what do they want most? Mm-hmm. Mm. And I wish our grandmothers could have set us down and say that, but did our did our grandmothers have the skills to do that? Were they right. in the were they in a space of, you know, setting and honoring boundaries? Exactly. Um 
Yeah. 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 I wondered that. Yeah. You know, we get to do better. We got the book, we got the tools. And I love this book, Nedra. I want to say it five times over. I love this book. I love this book um, because of the empowerment, the ability to create new choices and giving people the tools to understand and reimagine what they can do with their time, how they can make their decisions differently, how they can have more ownership in their story. I love it for that reason. And I also love it because I feel like it's a really great reflection of your intent to serve people with tools that are uh, you know, everlasting. These these are the things that we want to teach our children. And this is this is the type of book I want to give to my daughter when she's of age to read and understand, you know, how to make those adjustments if she needs to or when she needs to. I'll say not, not if, but when she'll need to. Yeah. Yeah. Because we'll all need it. I mean, I don't know. How, how young do you think you would have needed boundaries if you can if you can think back like what would what, what age would you give that I listen I would say I needed to understand this at birth because I was the mm. youngest <laughs> I was the youngest and I, I was born into sisterhood and I was taught by my sisters I didn't have any boundaries because my sisters were like you gonna do what we say when we say it yep they wouldn't let you right so there was no space for me to have boundaries or or anything that did not, um, wasn't adapted to their needs and all those things. So I would say you're absolutely right that the younger or the sooner we know the better now thinking through the way you're saying it. Yeah, I I think so too. And, you know, I think there is a way to teach kids about boundaries, but it's certainly something they should know. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. So last question for you, Nedra, what do you want to see or what will be your legacy? Mm. It's still becoming my legacy. Mm. I think that Mm. um, we can always say what we've done so far and say this is what we want our legacy to be. But I think it's still unfolding. Mm -hmm. And I would love to visit, revisit this, this, this question when I'm like 105. Mm, I love that. I love it. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm creating the legacy. So uh-huh. I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what it'll be because I'm, I'm still creating it. Yeah. So I'll, I'll know, I'll know in some time. I don't, I don't know quite yet. I, I do know I want a piece of it to be um, some sort of advocacy for self and advocacy for, for mental health. Um, but I don't know. I don't have a clear depiction because I'm still waiting on time. Mm, that's good. I love that. I love that. All right. So for our great girlfriends who want to keep up with you, where can they connect with you? Where can they follow? And where can they purchase the book? Yes. So I am most present on Instagram um, at Nedra Tawab. And the book can be purchased at independent book bookstores or anywhere that books are sold. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm most present on Instagram every single day almost. <laughs> that is awesome. I want to celebrate that because that how you do that, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank you for that as well. And also great girlfriends. We have, I think we have 10 copies available of the book. So for anyone who wants to, first 10, let me clarify that. The first 10 to email us with your name and your mailing address, we're going to ship out those copies to you as soon as this episode airs. Wow, that's a great gift. It's a great, I'm telling you, I love the book. I think it's a power piece. And I think every great girlfriend needs to have it in her, in her uh, collection. And I think it's also a great conversation piece for us as women, you know, with our friends. And and so we talk about everything. We need to talk about how we can set new boundaries and and reestablish our relationships as we need to, you know, on the, whenever they need to be adjusted, be willing to make those moves. So I love that what this book offers and I'm excited about it. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for joining us today, Nedra. Thank you for being a great girlfriend. Again, Set Boundaries, Find Peace is available everywhere that books are sold. And please do connect with Nedra on Instagram and continue to follow and support her work. And also follow our YouTube. Your YouTube is great as well. Thank you. 
Great girlfriends, did you enjoy this week's episode of the podcast? If so, would you please give us your amazing review on iTunes? Every single review helps another great girlfriend get plugged into the podcast, into the community. Speaking of community, make sure you join our Facebook group, The Great Girlfriends. You follow us on Instagram at The Great Girlfriends and on Twitter at the underscore great GFS. Last but not least, we'd like to thank my amazing husband, Kwaku, Sam and Dilly, and all of you for being a part of the global community that makes us so strong. Please remember to share with your friends, keep listening, and keep being a great girlfriend. I'm Sybil Amuti, and I'm out. Peace.